Hello, and uh, this is going to be another tip uh, video or kind of a how-to. Um, we it's currently um, raining and slash snowing outside where we're at, and over the last uh, few days, our propane has not been like our uh, hot water heater's been going out, and um, our propane uh, regulator hasn't been working exactly like it's supposed to. Um, I'm assuming that means that it's starting to go bad. Uh, after a number of years, they do need to be replaced. Um, most RV, um, if you're in a motorhome, uh, at least, the propane regulator is a two-stage regulator, which um, <clears throat> I just picked up from Tractor Supply. They're somewhere between around uh, 30, 40 bucks uh, to pick up one, so they're not incredibly expensive. And I'm going to replace the one that we had because uh, two reasons. One, the best time to replace a propane regulator is when it's snowing outside because that's fun. And second of all, uh, because of Murphy's Law, I know that if I don't change it and it's going wonky at the moment, it's probably going to stop working at around 2 in the morning when it's somewhere around 20 degrees. And uh, then I would have to figure out how to warm up the RV uh, without propane working so um, I'm gonna change it now before that happens even though the weather isn't great and I'm gonna show you how to change a propane regulator ready so it goes without saying that propane is flammable so if you don't feel comfortable uh, changing out your own propane parts um, or if you are worried about it in any way um, it's always a good idea to go to a qualified technician to get any of this stuff done as opposed to doing it yourself as you can see, in the beautiful Knoxville area of Tennessee right now, we are getting a wintry mix, which is basically slushy snow. Um, and I'm standing under my awning safely. In order to do the repair, I will be able to stay under my awning, which is nice. <clears throat> You're only going to need a few tools to do this fix. Uh, the first thing is you will need thread seal tape, uh, with the yellow kind, the, the kind that's rated for... Uh, gas lines you may need that um, it's always good to have a gas leak detector um, you can use soapy water if you want I have this stuff because I use it when I switch out my tanks um, so I didn't buy it specifically for this I use it frequently you'll probably need a wrench and of course your propane regulator now the propane regulator mine looks like this I'm gonna move this out of the way so here's the, the propane tank. Now I've actually installed um, an extend to stay T, which allows me to hook up a um, external propane tank. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you do this fix is turn off any propane that you have on. And this is the regulator, which I have covered under here. Um, and it's underneath this uh, protective cover. Uh, it's going to take me a moment to get this cover off. Now, normally they have plastic snaps on them or something. Uh, previously, before I installed this, my regulator was actually right here. So I actually had to modify this to um, extend it out. But everyone's going to look about the same. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, I'm going to need a couple of wrenches. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the cover. It's plastic. You do want to keep that and put it back on uh, for two reasons. Um, one, it generally RVs come with them, uh, so you probably they're there for a reason. Uh, but the regulators, this one has a really big vent, and this one has a smaller one, but they are vented. And so if you don't have a cover on it, you're going to get all kinds of debris and uh, dirt and uh, things in there which can cause the regulator to fail faster. So it's a good idea to keep that. So, I'm going to zoom in or come in closer. That is the propane regulator. Notice it looks like the other one, sort of, without the plastic covers. Um, it is a two-stage regulator and I am theoretically depressurized, so
So, first thing you want to do is unscrew it from where it's screwed into. And propane threads are backwards, which means it is not righty tighty lefty loosey most of the time. It's righty loosey lefty tighty. There we go. I'm just going to crack that, let the rest of the propane in the lines bleed out. Once it stops hissing, I finish unscrewing it. So I've got half of it done. That brings us to the other part, which is here, and in theory, I shouldn't be able to do it with my hand. This is going to be the fun part. There we go. Once you crack it loose, it should unscrew on its own. So, there is... What is that? I don't know. Condensation, perhaps? So, um, as I was uh, taking this out, you might have seen on the video that this thing has some uh, brown oily stuff in it. Um, that's common in propane. Uh, propane is a byproduct of um, gasoline and diesel production, and there's always a little bit of oil in it. And uh, if you get fills from poorly maintained equipment or old um, propane tanks, it's uh, very possible that uh, they have a lot of oil in them and so um, it'll start to accumulate. Um, as RVers we can't usually pick and choose where we get our oil filled and we can't always fill up at the state-of-the-art place so it, ultimately it's going to happen. Um, and it'll accumulate um, a little bit in here. Unfortunately that can, if you get a lot of it in there, um, it can gum up a regulator. Uh, but most propane systems are designed to accommodate it. Notice how uh, when this hose is plugged in, it's plugged in over here, and this goes uphill uh, before it enters the propane system. Um, that's kind of like a trap. So basically, after a while, all of that oil is going to accumulate down here, and hopefully the gas will go by it, um, just like a trap in your sink. Um, it is a good idea to periodically unscrew this and drain this out because um, it can uh, eventually cause malfunctions. Uh, and uh, if you are getting, uh, if you have a whole lot of oil in there, you haven't changed it out, and uh, you change your regulator, your propane system still not working, uh, it may be a good idea to go to a qualified RV technician to check out your propane system because you could possibly have some oil in the system which can prevent it from working and that's probably not something you want to do yourself it's not as easy as changing out a regulator um, so the first step I'm gonna do before I put on the new regulator is um, try to clean these threads off of the old tape as much as possible once you have the part this part clean where the tape is gonna go you can put the tape on. One note while you're putting this tape on is you do want to keep the tape on the threads and not in the orifice um, because you don't want pieces of tape in your propane system. And you do want to use the tape that's rated for gas lines. So, once I have the tape on, I can start that and screw it on. And it's not necessarily going to go on easy. So, 
So I'm going to help it along with a wrench. And it's not necessarily to be threaded a huge distance. You need to thread it enough so that it's sealed on the tape. But the entire thread on this wasn't used before, so probably doesn't have to be used again. And I'm going to assist myself here by holding the other end should allow me to twist it a little bit easy. Um, screwed in as much as it needs to be. Then we're going to connect this part. Um, as a note, um, you want to mount this so that the, according to regulations, uh, the vent on the bottom needs to be facing down and there should be um, no way for the cover to collect water. So considering uh, everything that I've found um, regulator wise does not have covers. Um, I took these plastic covers off um, mainly because I'm going to be covering both of them with this. So um, I don't need those I'm guessing and the other one that I had did not have them and I have actually never seen covers like that on a uh, regulator for an RV so I'm taking them off. If I'm wrong on that, if there's a RV guru that's watching this right now, let me know in the comments below. But um, the other, old one did not have it, and generally I have not seen those covers on them, so either way, it's probably not going to be a huge deal. So once this is plugged in, I'm basically just connecting this to my uh, T here. So I'm going to slide this in, and now as a note, I have this kind of going at a 45 or a little angle, so I'm actually going to tighten this so it's straight up and down um, because of that fluid. I uh, don't want that to collect, uh, or I want it to collect in there. I don't want it to go into the system, so I'm going to go ahead and give this one more little tighten so that it's straight up and down. when I plug this in, because um, gravity would dictate that fluid will stay in there. So now, once we have this done, as I said earlier, you want that vent on that big one to be facing down in here. Now this, remember, it's a propane fitting, so um, you would want to turn it clockwise to screw it in. Um, it does not screw in clockwise, it screws in counterclockwise. And what was that? That was, there was a little bit of pressure in here. Uh, this has a valve in it, obviously. Um, so once I screwed this in, the uh, valve allowed propane. There was a little bit of pressure in here to go out. Um, Is that normal? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had, uh, when the camera was off, I actually turned this on uh, to blow some propane out, but it didn't because it uh, has a valve right there. I was checking to make sure that any oil that had accumulated stayed up here and wasn't back here. Um, this felt dry, so the regulator system caught the oil, and uh, I'm not worried about the rest of the system at the moment. So once I hand tighten this to a certain point, um, notice I didn't put Teflon tape on here. Uh, this fitting um, works just like a, the fitting on your regular propane tank if you have an extend to stay. Um, notice it has a, uh, this part has a gasket. An O ring? Uh, yeah, O ring. And this one, I did not double check to make sure that it does have an O ring. Ah, yes. See, it has the O ring right there. So I don't need to put the tape on this. Because um, that will help it secure? Yeah, it'll, uh, it seals itself. So, as I said, once this is hand tightened, as far as you can go, uh, one note about the O-ring is uh, 
the valves that have an o-ring don't need to be insanely tight um, you just need to tighten it to a point where it's secure and it's not going to come loose so I'm going to hold on to this to keep this straight up and down the regulator and I'm just going to give this a few cranks until, until it's obviously in but I don't need to crank down on that too much just to the point where right there it's about tight I'm going to go probably a quarter turn past that um, so this is definitely secure um, however I didn't need to like just put everything I, I had on it and uh, so now my regulator is installed the next thing that I do is turn the propane on and check for leaks so you don't want to just turn this on really fast you want to turn it on slow and I turned the pilot off oh yeah so we turned everything off so this system is just getting pressurized so now the system should be pressurized the next thing I'm gonna do is drop all that stuff there and I'm gonna check for leaks so you get a gas leak detector and once again you can use uh, like really soapy water what this stuff does is the moment air pressure comes out it'll bubble up you did a video on that I did so I'm gonna spray some there for my first connection and you'll notice I have no bubbles Next thing I'm going to do is get a flashlight so I can see what I'm doing over here. Because if it's going to leak, the biggest possibility of leaking is going to be right in here. Which, of course, I can't see with the camera there. There we go. So, you want to make sure you soak that joint and look for bubbles all the way around where that joint is and make sure there isn't any and once you're satisfied as, uh, as you saw the flame kind of burning out a little bit uh, once I unscrewed that, I got all kinds of air in the lines instead of propane. So the, it took a moment for the propane to blow all the air out of the lines. The good news is our propane appears to be working. The next step is to walk over here on the panel. And I'm going to turn on my uh, water heater. And I'm going to turn my gas heat on and make sure that that kicks on. Um, as long as the red pilot light doesn't turn on, uh, pilot out light on my rig uh, doesn't turn on. So my heater just started. And I'm going to check and make sure that it's blowing out heat. So the air coming out of the vent is warm, which means it's working. So all of the propane items in our rig are working as they need to be. Next step is going to be putting Getting the cover. off of the floor. <laughs> Next step is getting up off of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, over here where the Christmas tree is. <laughs> So the next step is going to be wiping off the regulator from all of the leak detection liquid. Um, you do want to try and wipe off the best you can the fluid, um, the, whatever you use to detect leaks. Um, the main reason for that, especially if you use soap, uh, you don't want any more corrosive elements than are necessary to be hanging around all of your connections. So just wipe that off the best you can. Next step is going to be putting this thing back on, which is always a fun and exciting endeavor. They did not design this to go on and off easily, unfortunately. Change 
out your own regulator. It's simple and easy if you can get the cover on and off. There you go, almost. Almost. There we go. So, cover is on. And my next step is I originally had a screw uh, mm -hmm. to keep that down. So, um, pretty simple. That's how you change a propane regulator. It's as simple as unscrewing it, screwing it back on, and making sure you put the Teflon tape on that side, make sure you have a cover on it. Um, other than that, easy peasy. Uh, if you liked this video and you want to see more tips and ideas, uh, browse the rest of our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to it so you get notified whenever we upload videos. Also check us out on henleyshappytrails.com. You can find us on Facebook as well. So until we meet again, happy trails.